people already started coming in. <laughs> okay, I think we are live. Mm. Um, we're just gonna wait for some more people to come and join us. So we'll start at seven o'clock or six o'clock UK time, which is in about a minute. <laughs> Can everyone hear us? Can someone tell us whether we're loud enough? Yeah. Is the volume good? Can someone answer out there? <laughs> oh, hi. What does it say? Hi, Lizzie. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> does it sound okay, Lizzie? Yeah, great. Cool. Well, it's now it's six o'clock UK time, which means we are going to start. So hi everyone, welcome to Earth Live Lessons. I am Selin Gay and this is my mom, Joyce Poole. I um, just wanna say a quick shout out to Lizzie for inviting us and organizing everything. We're super excited to be here. Um, today, we are gonna be talking about elephants. Um, we're gonna be talking about elephant communication, elephant behavior, um, why elephants are important and what you guys can do to help elephants. So how this is going to work is I'm basically going to ask my mom questions because she's the expert and hopefully <laughs> I'll have something interesting to say as well. Um, if you guys have any questions, just uh, pop them in the, in the question section and I'll get to them as well. So we only have 20 minutes, so let's get started. Um, <laughs> Mama, what made you want to start Elephants? How old were you and how did it all get started? Well, I was very lucky in that I grew up in Africa, in, mostly in Kenya. And when I was 11 years old, I went to a lecture by Jane Goodall. That was in the early 1960s. And uh, so it was quite early in her study. And I just remember being fascinated by uh, um, her photographs of the chimpanzees and her life with them. And I told my mother then that that's what I was going to do. I feel like a lot of people, that's how they get started with conservation is yeah, through Jane Goodall. I've, I've actually talked to Jane about that and she says she's been told it so oh. many times. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, and when I was young, I went on safari and so I just always have loved animals. And when then when later when I was 19, my family moved back to Africa again. We were back and forth and back and forth. And um, and so I was at, un at university already studying biology, and I said to my parents, you know, I want to come back to Africa. So I took a year off, and uh, I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to work with Cynthia Moss at the Amboseli um, Trust for Elephants, or was then the Amboseli Elephant Research Project. And um, I haven't looked back. Um, that's what I've been doing ever since, is elephants, elephants, elephants. That's all you know is elephants. <laughs> but you know them pretty well. So that's okay. Yeah, I do. Um, and you've made some pretty important studies. Could you tell us a little bit about what you've discovered with elephants? Yeah, well, I started out, I was studying the males because Cynthia was studying the females. Um, and uh, I discovered quite early on that elephants come into must. Must is a um, heightened period, reproductive and aggressive period where elephants do all sorts of funny things, or males, I should say, do all sorts of funny things. They dribble urine wherever they go. They leave it. They leave this very strong smelling trail of urine. Um, they get swollen temporal glands that are located behind the, the eyes that also smell quite strong and they have all sorts of funny behaviors. You know, they strut around, they show off, they, their ears are held in a certain position and when they vocalize, they flap their ears in a certain way. So that was a really exciting discovery and propelled me forward doing my undergraduate thesis and my PhD and my postdoc and everything on, on must and how males were signaling to one another about their their status and how much testosterone they had and everything. Um, but that led to my next discovery, which was that these males were producing sounds below the level of human hearing. Uh, not the whole sound, but some of the frequencies were below the level of human hearing. Like whales. I, yeah, like whales. And I actually then connected with Katie Payne, who had studied whales for, for many years. And together we found that African elephants were 
uh, all the rumbles, in fact, all the rumble, the rumbling sounds. Um, elephants make many different sounds, trumpets and rumbles and snorts and roars and so on and so forth. But the rumbles are a class of their own and there are many different kinds of rumbles. But all of the rumbles made by adults have frequencies below the level of human hearing. And those sounds travel through the atmosphere further than um, higher frequency sounds. So we discovered that elephants were able to communicate with one another over great distances, you know, perhaps hearing one another from 10 kilometers away mm -hmm. and able to recognize each other's yeah. voices, um, individual voices from up to two kilometers away. So they, they were able to sort of, it's like how we use a telephone, you know, they're able to communicate um, with, with members of their family or friends that elephants are able to imitate um, the voices, sounds of other species and even machines. Yeah, because you discovered that they could imitate trucks on yeah, a motorway. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that was very weird. <laughs> <laughs> so elephants can make all sorts of sounds. And, and really what my passion is, is trying to understand what elephants are saying to one another, um, what these different sounds mean, what the different um, behaviors mean, like if they move their trunk in a certain yeah. way, that that yeah, so their body language as yeah. well. So that's what we're actually working on now: is building a library of um, African elephant behavior. It'll be an online library that you can access and learn all about. So you can learn to speak elephant. Yeah, basically, you can learn which to speak is pretty elephant. cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, elephants are obviously very important to you, and you are. Uh, probably the person who knows elephants better than anyone in the world. So what are some of your favorite things about elephants? Why are mm. they so fascinating to you? For me, it's that they are so um, intelligent. They're so emotional. They have such strong family bonds. I know we probably have some of the same things, but those are like my my three things that they just, I mean, they're just so special. In a way, they're so much like us. Yeah, exactly. Like good they're so, so much us. like, yeah, yeah, that's what, like, they embody everything that is the good things about us and not yeah. so much of the yeah. bad things. I agree um, with selling it So we should that. just behave more like elephants. Yeah. <laughs> Especially now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think that together with that, so on the one hand, they're so like us. And then in other ways, they're so completely different. I mean, look mm. at the way they look. Imagine having a nose that weighs 150 kilos, 300 pounds, whatever. And that nose can not only smell, but it can pick up the tiniest thing. It can push over a big tree. But and it's so sensitive. It's so sensitive. So the thing, the thing that I find is that elephants are so, in a way, mysterious because they can hear sounds that we can't hear. They mm. can smell scents that we can't detect. They, um, they can pick up vibrations through the ground that, you know, we have no knowledge of. For instance, zebras running two, three kilometers away, they can feel through the ground. So they react and they freeze. And then you, and then being with them, you learn to read yeah. that behavior. So yeah. Selig is very good at it, actually. Um, but it takes a while, you know, you just, you, you have to get to know elephants individually and she's yeah. a whiz at that. Um, and then you just, they're very subtle behavior sometimes, really, really subtle. But once you've tuned into it, like for instance, ear folding, you know, elephants will fold their ears as a threat. But it was many years that Cynthia and I, I didn't, know what didn't even, meant. we didn't notice it. Like and then suddenly the you see it. And then you, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> then suddenly you see it and it's, you know. Yeah, and they're also, what I think is so cool about elephants and that they're so dramatic like everything oh. is just like this big drama yeah whatever happens it's always like <laughs> everyone freak out <laughs> they are so funny they are just i mean yeah. so it's it's can be hilarious to be in the field watching elephants so sometimes like recently we were in amboseli and um trying to film and like uh, something's happening over really there something's happening you're like you have yeah. to move the car around. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and also you're trying to be really quiet because you're filming. We're trying to film behavior. Yeah. And they're doing something so absurd and you're just killing yourself sort of laughing <laughs> inside and trying not to burst out loud laughing. 
So with all that said, why do people care? Like, why are elephants important? What could, should future generations know that will make them want oh, to protect elephants? Well, gosh, I mean, you know, I'm so lucky because I've spent time with them and, and I can't imagine a world without elephants. Yeah, I think that what we need to do is bring some of the, the work that we've been doing into a kind of like, one might call it a virtual zoo instead of taking these poor animals and capturing them mm. in the wild and sticking them in, you know, in, um, in an enclosure that where they're bored and unhappy and not behaving at all like elephants. Kind of like being it, in quarantine. Think yeah. of it that way. Yeah, You're bored, like, staring at the walls, wandering around your house. Yeah. Like that's it, how an animal feels in the zoo. Yeah. And instead of that, having a place where you could walk into this, say, a huge a huge space where you actually felt like you were walking amongst them, where you could hear the rumbles and the trumpets yeah. and, and see how they behave. And I think in that way, we would, people would realize just how very special they, they are. Yeah. Um, but they, they also, aside from making us feel happy, um, they play a very important ecological role. Yeah. Um, without elephants, you know, the bush would come back and many species would die out of, of certain habitats. If you have too many elephants crowded in, the same can happen. So mm -hmm. the thing about elephants is they're called the ecological engineers or, or the gardeners. The gardeners or so basically what so happens is elephants they eat trees and they're they are not. They don't have a very good digestive system. So then, when well, it's they, good, it's just well, it's not very thorough. Then it's not very thorough. When they poop, they are the seeds that they eat are planted into the earth, and mm. therefore they grow trees again. So they're knocking down trees, but at the same time they're planting them, and they grow back. So and they move so much. So yeah. they they move through the habitat, um, uh, changing it and uh, creating, um, yeah creating different habitats for different species to live in. Um, we've got a question from Emily. Uh, mm -hmm. Elephants travel around in herds, I thought. So why do they need to project sound so far? <laughs> uh, that's a good question, actually. Uh, they, they travel around in families, um, but just like our families, families are not always together. So members of a family may be together for a few hours, then they split up, then they come back together. When they come back together, they greet one another. Um, and then they're, they're gone again. Um, so yes, they do have to, they use those calls and they use in particular contact, what we call contact calls, which are very, very powerful calls. Mm -hmm. And they're also just trying to find where their families are, where their um, other relations are, like yes. distant relatives, or even like for or example, males finding an estrus. Yeah, female. if males are in must, there's a special yeah. sound that the females make to let the males know that they are ready to mate. Mm -hmm. uh, likewise with the males. Mm -hmm. um, so there's another question: Are there any individuals that still really stand out to you? Um, <laughs> have you connected with? A question for you both. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Oh, um, so many in different ways. Yeah, in a lot of different ways. I think um, for me, I had a really special experience last year with an elephant who unfortunately died recently. And I'm sure like a lot of you have seen him. His name was Tim. And he was like a, the big tusker. I don't really like to use that word. But anyways, he had really, really big tusks. And he was famous all over Instagram and all over the world. And he was just this really gentle elephant even though he was so big and yeah and he I met him I saw him in Amboseli last year and he just made a really lasting impact on me and it's just something I'll never forget it's like being in the presence of a dinosaur or something like he was he's just so majestic he's exactly like what a mammoth would have been and yeah it's just really sad that he he died he died of natural causes just want to say that so yeah. And um, well, I suppose, I mean, so many different elephants, but one was Vladimir, who um, came very close to my car many, 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 many years ago, and so close that I could reach out of the car and touch him, a completely wild elephant. And after that... Wait, can I just say, don't go touching wild elephants. This was an <laughs> elephant that she'd spend a lot of time with. Like, they were they were friends. Well, no, I mean he came very close, and I start I reached out and I was uh, touching his his uh, 
trunk and he didn't react at all. I just couldn't believe it. And then he leaned in and he, I mean, he was a big boy. He leaned in and put his tusk right in, right in the window in front of me. And so I just took a hold of the tusk and I put him, pushed him back out and he let me push him back out. And then he just stayed there listening to me. So after that, every time I saw him, I'd say, you know, hello, Vladimir, come Vladimir, come Vladimir. And he would come over to the car and he would let me touch him. So then I went away for like, I was I was gone because I was working for the Kenya Wildlife Service and doing various things. And he had also become a big, big male and he had gone off, you know, outside the park. So I hadn't seen him, I think it was for like 12 years. And I came back and I looked at him and it was then 34 years old. And I thought, oh my goodness, is that is that him? And I drove up and I called and I said, Vladimir, come Vladimir. And he came still over the car after 12 years. I mean, that's some of the amazing things about, about elephants. They have. They're so extraordinary. No, they're so intelligent. Good example memory, of like the memory. memory. Yeah, it's actually yeah. they have amazing long-term memory. Mm -hmm. um, okay. How do the savanna elephants compare or differ from the forest elephant cousins in the Congo forest? From mm -hmm. Joe. Hi, Joe. <laughs> Hope your leg is better. <laughs> your shoulder. Well, uh, I believe it or not, I have not seen forest elephants. I'm embarrassed to say I haven't. I, I'm, it's one of my dream, lifelong dreams still to go, but I'm not sure when that's going to happen. But certainly when you look at them, they're very different looking. Um, the tusks come, the way the tusks come out of the, out of the skull, the, the forest elephants come almost back a little bit and down, very kind of straight tusks. The ivory is different. It's more highly prized, unfortunately, by ivory carvers, which means that they are really endangered now, compared more endangered than the savanna elephants, because the pressure on them for their for their ivory, for their teeth, is really high. Um, but otherwise, they're sort of smaller ears, uh, smaller stature, wider um, kind of face, almost like their, their faces, faces look. Wider. They do. They look quite different. Um, they are in smaller, tend to be in smaller groups. Um, their voices sound a bit different. Yeah. Um, we had some more. Well, one more question. Too. One yeah. more question. Um, you said that the glands smell during must, and that they start. Oh, they swell and start to smell. Sorry, mm -hmm. dyslexia. Um, what on earth does an elephant smell like? Uh, well, must I think smells kind of good. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's quite, it's a very strong smell, and when you first smell it, you're like, what on earth is that? And then you kind of get used to the smell. You're like, mm, that's kind of smells quite good. But well, hmm. yeah, it well. smells kind okay. of sweaty, um, but like, <laughs> okay, the the, the temporal gland smells. Yeah, kind of sweet, sweaty smell. I mean, actually, it smells quite delicious. Not delicious. But no, I mean, really, it does smell very good. Because, <laughs> because there was a time when these two males were fighting, and when they fought, um, well, they had their tusks up against each other's faces, and one of the males had one of his tusks broken. So I picked up that tusk. And it had all the smell of the temple gland secretion on it. And it was so Moorish, you know. I had it all over my hands. And I was just like, <sighs> it was so good, <laughs> I have to say. But the, the the urine dribbling, which is the smell that you really get when, when you're downwind of a musk male, that is quite, uh, um, I mean, I like it. I still like it because I, I like those big boys. But um, it, it's, it is pretty strong yeah lizzie's asking if we think we're an elephant and yeah yes. sometimes yes. i mean sure. we spent so much time with them so I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um okay we're almost reaching our 20 minute mark so i just want to ask um what are some of the threats that elephants are facing yeah. today i know the ivory trade is still ongoing um even though it's a bit black market what are some other yeah, well, the, the ivory, the ivory trade, and and then poaching, killing the killing, illegal killing of elephants to feed that trade. Um, it is more under control than it was, but there are some populations that are really still being hammered. Um, so that's a, a big thing. And then, uh, so don't buy ivory. 
tell everyone don't buy ivory. Yeah. You've got it. That's the most important thing. Public awareness. You spread, not the be, word, spread the word, guys. Use social don't media. Don't buy ivory. Yeah. Um, uh, and then there's there's habitat loss. I mean, we humans are just a bit of a scourge on this uh, planet, and we are overrunning everything. So it means that there's less and less space for any other species, and um, and that uh, of course applies to elephants because they need so much space. Yeah. Um, and then you get into the whole human wildlife conflict. Like yeah. elephants have used the same routes for hundreds of years and then when someone goes and puts up a fence in the middle of this migratory route the elephants will knock down the fence they will go in they will eat the the corn or whatever and and then people will retaliate they might spear an elephant they might even kill the elephant mm -hmm. and that's where you get into human wildlife conflict so it's a big issue and um it's one that's really impacting africa and kenya especially so I mean, we it's, just need... it's 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 sad for elephants and it's sad for people because uh, you know there are many people who would lose their entire crop you know yeah. with one elephant so it's 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 a very serious problem and and understandably people hate elephants because of that i mean you know how how would you feel if everything you own basically was destroyed in one night by an elephant so trying to solve these problems and look at how uh, at spatial planning like where where should there be uh houses and where should there be elephants and trying to yeah. to find solutions for for these growing problems yeah and with that said um i guess there's a lot of things that you people at home can do to help um you can support ngos um we put a link to elephant voices in this video um, there's also lots of other amazing NGOs out there that need help. Um, please spread the word on social media. Learn more about elephants. Our website has so much. Follow important. Elephant Voices. Yeah, follow us on <laughs> social media. I put the links of that as well. Um, there's so much you can learn about elephants that will make you love them even more. I mean, the 20 minutes is just not enough to tell you guys everything. And I hope that you've learned something. Unfortunately, we kind of have to wrap this up. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you're lucky enough, please go to Africa and see these elephants in the wild where they belong and where they're happy and thriving. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> just, just please spread the word. That's basically what we Oh, and say. go to our website. I if you want, are you? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dizzy has one more question. How are populations of elephants doing globally? Um, they're holding their own, Lizzie. I mean, um, and, it, and it really, it really depends from one population to the next. You know, in some places where they're well protected, then there are too many, um, which is stupid. Well, no, it's not stupid. I mean, there are too many for the number of people yeah, in, okay. in the area. Um, and then in other places, like in in Central Africa, they are just being they're being wiped out. Yeah. And that's having catastrophic effect on the the rainforest as well, because elephants are, you know, the the seed dispersers. Mm. And some trees absolutely de depend on elephants to to or even germinate. some animals. animals yeah. Mm. So yeah, that's um, us for today. If you have any more questions, just send them to us on social media and we'll be happy to answer them. Um, if you want to know more and you want us to do another live like on Elephant Voices, we are very happy to do that. Like I said, we have so much more to say. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I hope you guys have learned something and just keep watching the Earth Live lessons and learn more. <laughs> Thanks guys, <laughs> bye. <laughs>